Good morning, everyone watching live here on BAM YouTube. Let me know in the comments which market you are tuning in live from. The hot sheet covers what you need to know about the real estate industry in a 24-hour time period. And on today's hot sheet, I will discuss the SVB collapse and what it means for real estate, Biden's address on banking, and a weekly inventory update. Today is Monday, March 13th, 2023. I am Byron Lazine, and the hot sheet starts now. To be back in the home studio here in Naples, Florida, not located in my home, but this would be the home base studio to deliver this very important hot sheet. This week's going to be really crazy. I, I have a feeling that, uh, you know, Tuesday, we're not going to be back tomorrow, meaning back to just normal. So happy to be back in Naples after the broke agent wedding. Hit the thumbs up. Please consider sharing this. We've got a lot to cover, obviously. Today with the with the news over uh, you know Friday afternoon and and into the weekend so let's get right into it with the banking crisis and uh, the run on banks really which was potentially stopped last night by our government we will get into that in just a bit but let's just recap uh, what happened with SVB Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, and we get into a little bit on obviously Signature Bank and First Republic Bank uh, secured funding from J.P. Morgan. So, so a lot happening with banks. But let's let's start with the first shoe to drop: Silicon Valley Bank, a regional bank, obviously in Silicon Valley. They were considered a top twenty bank in the country. This is the second largest U.S. bank collapse in history. The last seventy two hours for for those of us who had something to lose in 2008. I was certainly in that camp. Uh, you know, for those of you who went through 2008, did the last 72 hours feel like that? Let me know in the comments uh, or hit the thumbs up if you agree with that. It certainly was very reminiscent. And I've said on the hot sheet many times, we are nowhere close to anything like 2008. And because on here, we talk about housing. We, we talk about the U.S. housing market on the hot sheet. That's what we cover every single day. And when it comes to housing, it, I still believe that. We are nothing like what happened in 2008. We're not going to have an economic meltdown spurred by a mortgage crisis. And, and that's not what SVB is. It's not even anything close. Okay, so, uh, but when you just look at the gravity of what just happened. That's where it starts to feel like 2008. Nothing to do with housing, but everything to do with our economy and, and reminiscent of the biggest bubble the last 10 years, which was not real estate. The real big bubble was all this tech investing over the last 10 years. Silicon Valley, obviously the hub for tech investing. And uh, this particular bank, Silicon Valley Bank, would be what it well, was, because no longer in business, was a bank for startups to hold their cash. Okay. So uh, if a startup got funding from, you know, a VC or, or something like that, they acquired cash, they got to leave that cash somewhere to be able to invest into their business, to be able to make payroll, and, and they'd put it in a place like Silicon Valley Bank. Silicon Valley, San Francisco, these tech ba this tech based community that that leads you know tech it, it's very close knit think of it if you're in real estate think of it like the real estate industry where it's very much tied together you know if if something's about to happen word can travel very quickly through these text groups okay so you know big venture capitalists uh you know investors in tech and and so on they're all in text chats together just like you know real estate brokers or you know prop tech people people in the industry so very similar to that okay and so when uh, there was you know some issues with silicon valley bank last week these investors you know these these folks in silicon valley and their text groups were encouraging each other 
to get their money out. Something's going to happen with SVB. And that's what they did. They started to really make a run on the bank by pulling their money out for safety. Now, if you're one of the first people, you know, in the game of telephone that, that hears this information, you know, are you supposed to just sit there and say, well, no, we're going to make a run on the bank and, and, you know, I'm not going to pull my money out because, you know, this bank could collapse. Of course not. That, that, that person's going to protect their interests and they're going to protect the investment that they have in their company payroll. And if they've got a chance to pull out and get it over to safety, they're going to do that. Now, the fear on Friday was clear that with this collapse of a regional bank, you could see a run on other banks. And we saw over the weekend Signature Bank failed. We, we've seen you know, the last 24 hours that First Republic secured funding from JP Morgan. And there was rumors of many, many, many other regional banks. In fact, a lot of these Silicon Valley people, these uh, San Francisco people, we're on Twitter saying, you know, they're basically saying, we know that there's a run on other banks coming because we're hearing it. It's in our text groups. Um, you know, we've got this information that there will be a run unless the government comes in and do, does something. So a lot of tech people in particular, I'm not trying to beat up on the tech industry at all here, but I'm just, you know, this is, this is what was happening over the weekend. We're really pushing for government intervention, not a bailout. And so most of them were not calling for a bailout. You know, let's give them the credit there. They weren't asking for a bailout. They were asking for a government backstop to make sure that depositors, people who deposited money into SVB would be, you know, secure. You know, they'd have 100% of their money secure, basically, where, where they would be guaranteed they're not going to lose any money. Okay. And there, there's some people that say, hey, well, maybe they should lose a little bit. Uh, but the general theory out there was, well, let's make sure that they don't lose any money, okay? And so uh, as we went through uh, the weekend, there was a little bit of a debate on, you know, well, okay, so are you going to let everybody go to these four big banks, right? Because we know if, if there's a run on these regional banks, people are going to go to Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, uh, you know, Wells Fargo. They're going to go to the big four. Okay, let me know in the comments, by the way, do you bank at a regional? Do you bank at a big four? Just say regional or big four, regional or or, or big four. And, and there's there's very big regional banks and there's smaller regional banks. But just, just give me some context here in the comments. Are you banking regional or big four? If there's going to be a run on all these regional banks, everybody's going to go a big four. And and there's a big debate on on if that's good or not, right? We, we need some regional banks. Um, you know, it is a popular belief. Uh, and if everybody goes to the big four and something happens there, then then we're really into into some big trouble. OK, so just in case you're wondering kind of a little bit more of, of uh, what was going on. Oh, I got to fix that uh, while I fix that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the whiteboard here in a second and kind of show you what what was going on at SVP, SVB. This was a bank that a lot of uh, startups would go to because they can't find, um, you know, a lot of banks that are just going to hold the type of cash that they need to hold. Think about this. FDIC insures up to $250,000. Okay. So I just heard somebody in the, in the hall say, well, you, you're a business person. You're supposed to spread out your money to different, um, different bank accounts. If you get 20, if you're a startup, you get $20 million of funding because you're growing a company and you've got this big payroll, we can take $20 million and, and go to, uh, what would that be? 80 different banks to bank accounts to secure 250,000 that's silly it's just just people so that you know there's got to be a solution here for these startups uh if you just secure up to $250,000 for for a startup you think your money's good at SVP by the way SVP was around for 40 years 40 years okay so this isn't a bank that just in the last 10 years was a was a place for uh, all these San Francisco startups to kind of put their money. Now, SVP should be held highly accountable uh, and they and they should be to blame here because when they took this money, okay, they went out and did uh, some very risky things with it. Okay. And we're going to, we're going to find out more about the risk that they took, but essentially SVP would take this money. So, so let's say you've got startups. Let's just keep it simple. You've got startups securing funding. Okay. 
Uh, they're going to give that over to SVB, the bank. Okay. Uh, so now they're going to they're going to deposit that money. Okay. So depositors, the, the startups, these businesses, they're giving their money to SVP so that when they need it, so when they need to make payroll every two weeks, it, it'd be like BAM taking their money and giving it to SVP. And we want to make payroll every, every single two weeks. It should be there, right? The biggest expense for BAM right now is payroll, right? We're, we're building a monster media company. And if we don't have that money because it's locked up, which now as of this morning, it's not going to be locked up for these guys anymore. Uh, then you're going to have thousands of businesses fail. But if you have thousands of businesses fail across the country, that's going to stop U.S. innovation. So uh, I don't want to see thousands of businesses fail. I don't want to see people not invest in startups across the country. U.S. innovation would take a 10-year step back. We can't see that. We cannot see that. Okay, so uh, innovation across the board would have really stopped and and you'd see far few investments in U.S. companies, if we had this bank run, it, it, if more banks uh, fail, and, and listen, it remains to be seen, we could see more banks fail. Okay, so I'm, I'm not saying that this is today is like it's over. I think this is kind of uh, maybe just the tip of the iceberg here in some degrees. Okay, all right. So startups would give their money to SVP. Now, what SVP was doing with this money, because obviously banks give, they send the money out, right? Bank banks are going to send the money out. Uh, you know, you know how banks work. They don't just keep the money in the account one for one. How they make money is they make these different investments. They give out loans. Now, one of the problem was they were loaning money to startups. Okay, well, you're you're now loaning money. Some some of the startups in real estate, for example, that that SVP had a relationship with, whether they loaned money or or they kept money there, would be Open Door. Okay. Open door though, $15 million, less than 1%. Okay. Ojo was, was one of these companies. Um, Airbnb was another one that, that had a relationship there. So, so th those are just some of the, uh, some of the prop tech companies that, that had some type of an investment with SVP. Okay. So giving a, taking money from a startup, which is risky, they may fail. A lot of startups fail, giving it to SVP and then just SVP giving it right back to startups it seems a little not doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay. You know, this should be a very small percentage. They were also taking long term, you know, so like uh, treasuries, right? They sold off a bunch of treasuries on Friday, you know, 10 year uh, treasuries, for example, these longer term, where you, you can't really get your money out unless you sell it at a loss, which is what happened when they tried to sell Thursday and Friday. Uh, and so SVP was doing th this kind of stuff with, with the money. Okay. And so uh, I've got a couple charts here help to hopefully help better explain this. Um, and let's go to the charts and, and just take a look here. Okay. So uh, not that one. Here we go. This is the SVP balance sheet summary. I got this from the all in podcast. They did a great job explaining this the other day. Okay, so what they owed was uh, 195 billion, and then what they have was 208 billion. So how how did they fail? Okay, <clears throat> customer deposits of 173 billion. That that's basically what the government is now going to uh, guarantee this 173 billion that customers um, deposit. They that that's on the you know debt side because that's what they owe out. If depositors come and say, "I want this money back," this 173 billion. It's over there on the left side. They've got to be able to give them that money. Now, typically, you don't see everybody all at once, like you saw last week, go and ask for their money. This was spurred by this Silicon Valley network of people that are friends with each other saying, go get your money, go get your money. Something's happening at the bank, okay? Um, what they actually had, they only had $14 billion in cash, okay? So when, you know, all of a sudden, $30, $40 billion is, you know, of people depositors saying i need i need this money 40 billion which is essentially what happened 40 something billion uh they've got to go and sell off some securities okay so available for sale securities 26 billion okay you add the 26 billion and the 14 billion you're at 40 but it was over 40 that w was um being requested out at the end of last week as this run started to happen um Hold to maturity securities, you know, so they that 91 billion, they, they really can't sell that. Then they have 74 billion in loans, meaning they've loaned 
this money out, this customer deposit money out. And so, yeah, they have this asset of this loan, but he, here's where that 74 billion comes in of the loans. How many of those were out to, uh, to startups, to tech, tech startups? Silicon Valley Bank was, was the one place that a lot of tech startups could go to and work with. So they're going to make some money on those loans, but how many of those loans are going to default? Because when you're dealing with a startup, you're, you're not, it's not a guarantee. And so how, how do you actually say that that 74 million was good? So SVP was taking a lot of risk. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the, in the coming weeks with, you know, what, what were the regulators doing here in regards to SVB and, uh, and others, Signature Bank and, and First Republic and some of these other ones uh, that have also started to have some issues here over the weekend or like Signature Bank certainly fail out. Um, and, and, you know, so, so there you go. That, that's, that's kind of what happened with SVP. Let, let's take a look at what's happening now, uh, President Biden, oh, before we actually get to, to President Biden's comments, uh, let's just take a look at the gravity of the situation really quick. This is total assets of failed U.S. banks by year. That blue line all the way on the right today, that's just SVP. That's not Signature Bank. That's not any of these other ones that may happen this week. Um, so when I say, hey, this feels like 2008, uh, that's more than half of what happened in 2008. Okay, Silicon Valley was 208 billion. And in 2008, total assets were less than 400 billion. Okay, so this is a huge, huge, huge deal in terms of assets being held by the bank. There were 561 bank failures from 2001 through 2022. Okay, uh, total assets at $373 billion. And uh, and the and then the bank failures by numbers in years. So 25 bank failures, 28, 2008, 140, 2009, 157 in 2010. OK, uh, 2022, we saw zero. 2021, we saw zero. 2020, four. 2019, four. 2018, zero. And all of a sudden this weekend, we're, you know, we're at two for sure. First Republic got bailed out. And there's rumors of others that are just going to continue to swirl around until this thing all all shakes out. Uh, in terms of billions of dollars, we are higher than uh, we're higher than the 2009 number already. So 2009, you had 140 banks fail, but that was 170 in billion in total assets. We're already higher than that number with one bank. This is how huge Silicon Valley Bank was. Uh, 2010, you had 157 banks fail, but that was less than $100 billion. OK, so this is a huge, huge amount of money because these while these are startups, these are startups that have gone out and gotten a ton of funding. Now, some of these venture capitalists keep their money at SVB. The, 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 so you've got you've got these VCs that keep their money at SVP because SVP allows, you know, allows these companies to put large amounts of money in there and they feel like they're secure, even though FDIC only secures up to 250,000. And then those VCs are investing in startups who also keep their money at SVP. Okay, this, this was like the bank for a lot of these tech companies. We, we don't want tech innovation to stop. We definitely need a place for them to keep their money and make payroll. Um, but SVB going out there and taking their own risk is what put us into to this position, as well as, listen, the pressure on SVB as as the Federal Reserve continue to fight inflation and jack up the federal interest rate hurt them in a big way. And we'll see. We'll talk about before the end of the show what we think is going to happen there. OK, so you see how big this is. This is enormous. Um, what, what's happened with SVP, SVB rather. And uh, let, let's talk about what President Biden said just this morning at 9 a.m. Uh, this is after yesterday, the FDIC coming out and saying all depositors are going to be 100 percent safe. They're going to get all they're going to have access to their money today, Monday the 13th. So notice that that happened last night before global markets opened. And notice that President Biden spoke at 9 a.m. before the 930 
stock market opened, which by the way, a little update here as we're here at 950. The Dow is flat. S&P is down just a little bit. And NASDAQ is down just a little bit. So not real big moves on, on, um, on the markets right now. People are kind of waiting and seeing, investors rather, are waiting and seeing what's happening. All right. So here are the, the top five key points from President Biden's announcement today. And then we're going to get into what this means for housing. No losses borne by taxpayers. Okay. So this is going to be paid from uh, bank fees, okay, that are collected by FDIC. Okay. So they're saying taxpayers will not bear this cost, which they did in 2008. So big difference there. This is all going to be paid for by bank fees. So the banks that are still in business, basically, and the people that bank with them are, are going to, to pick up the bill here. I guess that that's what's happening. Number two, all of management will be fired from SVB. Okay, so man management now with the government basically owns SVB and management has been terminated. Number three, investors in the bank will not be protected. Okay, so SVB stock is basically worthless and those investors lose all their money. So you inv if you invested in SVB stock, uh, you took the risk as an investor into that bank and you will not be protected. You will lose everything. Okay, what happened in 2008 was uh, management was protected. In, in a lot of these bailout, these bank bailouts. And they ended up giving themselves huge, you know, stock awards and and, and all. And obviously the tax that taxpayer paid that. So that that was um, you know, that, that was what it was. Number four, questions. Um, well, he didn't take questions, by the way. Biden Biden didn't take questions. Uh, but what he was saying was questions going forward is that uh, they're gonna look into why this happened. Now, those are the questions that they have as a government. And no one is above the law. So he, Biden only spoke five minutes, didn't, didn't take a single question himself. So uh, anyways, uh, number five, uh, they're going to reduce the risk of this happening again. He blamed it on the last administration. So number his number five point was more political. Of course, uh, you know, if, if you get a politician that's going to speak on anything, they're going to they're going to blame it on somebody not in their party. And so Joe Biden took the opportunity to do just that at the end of his speech, spoke for five minutes, didn't take any questions. The fact that um, Janet Yellen, the Federal Reserve and the FDIC all came out together in unison, those those three, you know, branches uh, of the government <clears throat> or of the, uh, you know, financial institutions of the government came out in unison last night to announce that, you know, they are going to backstop uh, SVB and that President Biden spoke for five minutes this morning. I, tell, it tells me that we're kind of going at, you know, we're, we're not guessing as we go. I don't think there, these people are guessing. These are obviously very smart people and all, all that kind of thing, but they really don't know what's coming next. Okay. They're waiting till the last minute to make these decisions and they're collecting data and they should, and, and for sure got all of that. Um, they could have stepped in on Thursday or Friday you know, if this is ultimately what they were going to do on Sunday, there's a debate for that. If they stepped in earlier, maybe we're in a different situation. Maybe you would have found a buyer for SVB, which they didn't do. Nobody, no, none of these big banks came in and bought a top 20 bank. Okay. So that, that, that tells you, okay, they were taking some real risks that, you know, a JP Morgan or, uh, or a B of A didn't want to come in and buy them. They didn't see that as an asset and the, and the government didn't make it, you know, uh, advantageous enough for them to come in and, and buy them and uh, try to solve the issue. Because I mean, if you've ever watched any of these movies about the financial crisis, the government will step in and try to get these other banks to buy the bank as a solution and and offer them some advantages to doing that. I'm, I'm sure there was those discussions behind the scenes, and it never happened. Okay, so wh what do I like about what President Biden said that taxpayers aren't going to pick up the bill? We'll see what happens here moving forward. Uh, that management's going to be fired. They should be fired uh, for sure. Um, that investors will not be protected. I'm there. So like all of you know Biden's three points, I'm I'm with it. All right. Um, I am with us going out there and backstopping this bank. You can debate it in the comments whether you're for that or not. Uh, you know this would have been a massive bank run, regardless of you know how we feel who who is banking there and the network and all that kind of other stuff that I talked about, regardless of all that, there would have been a massive bank run today 
on regional banks and people rushing to get into the top four banks. And hopefully that the hope is that that has been reduced down to nothing. That would be the, you know, potential best case scenario. Uh, there's belief that we're still going to have maybe some, uh, some more fallout and, and we just don't know right now. Okay. So what's happened with housing? And then I've got a, uh, housing market, uh, housing market, uh, report to go over from housing market tracker, rather from housing wire, which they put out earlier this morning. So that's good. All right. So usually we talk about the 10 year at the end of the show. I'll just talk about the 10 year right now, 10 year drop Friday. We saw the 30 year drop down to 6.75 on Friday. Okay. So when the, when the 10 year dropped Friday, as this news was, was breaking and, and it dropped very quickly as this news broke, uh, the 30 year end of the day at uh, 6.76, our lowest read in weeks. Okay. So we know that when the 10 year drops, the, the 30 year is going to follow the 10 year right now. Uh, I mean, this is a huge drop in one day. Okay. So we're back down to three, four, nine. Now we're back down to three and a half percent. We were just at 4% last week. This is an enormous drop, very uncommon for the 10 year to, to move this much. We know that when we've been down to 3.2 in recent memory uh, or, or three point uh, in the last month, what's our range been here? Let's see if we can get that up. So, yeah. So when we get down to that three, four, I'm sorry, is this, is this uh, giving me what I want here? Uh, let's go to three month on the 10 year. Yeah. We haven't gotten down to 3.2. We get down to 3.2. I think we're going to hold under 6% on the 30 year. When we get down to this 3.5 number that we're at right now or below, it's been that 3.4 number. The, the low part 3.4, we've actually touched 6% on the 30 year fixed. So potentially today, we could be at around 6% on the 30 year fixed. If I had to guess, I guessed yesterday, six, seven, or Friday, rather, 6.75. If I had to guess today, I'd say we're not going to get quite to six because that'd be a huge drop. But I could see a half a point drop to 6.25. So for home shoppers or investors, today might be a day for shopping. Okay. Today and tomorrow could be a day for shopping for real estate. If you're using a 30 year fixed, I could see it ending up at 6.25. There's a case to be made that if we continue to drop on the 10 year, today and it gets to three four that we could be back to six percent like that this is very uncommon so what looks like you know bad for the u.s economy could be helpful to home shoppers as the cost of the 30-year fix could be coming down the fed is probably less likely to do that 50 basis point hike that we've been talking about coming in the next week or you know next week or two march 23rd so about 10 days week and a half Probably less likely, uh, you know, this increasing of the interest rate is one of the reasons, you know, that this happened to SVP. Okay. So, um, less likely to do that, which means real estate could be coming into the spring market, could be getting more affordable for home shoppers that are using a mortgage. Okay. What does housing wire say? Uh, mortgage rates fall after the S after the SVB failure, uh, Last week was wild, obviously not just for housing, but for everything that, that we just talked about. Okay, we know that the purchase application data rose 7%. This week, it's definitely going to go up. Uh, we're still down 42%. Here's the weekly inventory update. Okay, so this is where we are at uh, from last week. I was We were knocking on wood here in the comments like, please, let's let inventory go up this week. We finally need it to go up. Weekly inventory fell, though, again in the last week. 6,201 homes and new listing data is down noticeably from last year, which was different than last week. Okay. So going to just skipping through to, to inventory, these charts are down below for you. Here's your Altos uh, inventory update. You see that we continue to fall. Obviously the weekly inventory change from March 3rd to March 10th fell from 418 to 412,000 available units across the country. Same week last year. Uh, we actually rose. So this was the week last week was the week last year where we had a rise in inventory. So we haven't hit or we don't know if we've hit our bottom yet. Obviously, we fell again last week. So will this week be the bottom? I don't know. Last week, 
this time last year was the bottom 240,000 and went up to 247,000. Okay. Active listings in 2015 were 960,000. Okay. So for those that say, wow, inventory is way up right now, 960,000 versus the 412,000 today. Okay. So that's less than half of the 960,000 in 2015. Okay. Uh, last week, um, here we have the year over year new listing data. And you can see that 2022 was at 60,000 for new listings. We're at 51,453. You can see the black line here, well below this 2021, 2022 number. This data coupled with where the 30 year fixed is heading right now off of the heels of this banking crisis should be a perfect storm for a home seller right now to get out at this very you know, potentially beginning point of what could be a little spring run as home shoppers have some reprieve potentially from the 30 year fixed. Uh, and before the inventory really hits the market, now could, could be an opportunity to be that one listing out there that gets just a ton of activity. Okay. So there's your inventory update. I'm sure we're going to have a lot more to talk about this week in, in the banking world. And we're going to see, you know, what else happens uh, so this is, again, the gravity of this is like 2008. I, how it relates to housing is nothing like 2008. You actually see that this has helped housing. I don't, I don't want to go out there and say, hey, look at it. Look at that big win for, for everybody in real estate. You're going to have a boom this week. Uh, that's just what's going on. Okay. This is, this is reminiscent of the real bubble of the last 10 years, which was this tech investing bubble where these investors went out and really got over their skis on how they were going to invest in these tech startups. And you saw two recessions last year, tech and housing. Housing was created by the Fed, who said they wanted to reduce the cost of home prices because it was their best tool to fight inflation. And you saw a tech recession because they didn't have this free money to continue to pump into startups. I want startups to have investments and I want startups in this country, but that was the biggest bubble of the last 10 years. And this Silicon Valley bank collapse certainly shows us that. Okay. Uh, we'll continue to watch what the 10 year does today. We'll see what happens down below. Make sure you grab our new ebook for video equipment for every single budget. If you need uh, an ebook that explains video equipment for every single budget, you've got that. And then premiering on the channel today, live at 11 a.m. is the Over Ask podcast. All right. Have a great Monday, Monday the 13th, wild Monday. And I'll see you guys all back here tomorrow, live at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. Until then, toodaloo.